Well, this year we have seen dramatic developments in health care from new regulations to brand new technology. It's been a mixed bag for patients. What can we expect for 2016? We want to bring in Mitt Rothschild, Executive Chairman of Vitals. It's an online resource for patients to find doctors and hospitals, which I think is so interesting because you're in the business of basically helping us to manage our own care and to do it from the comfort of our own home. Yes, uh, there's been a revolution on the supply side of things in healthcare. Whereas previously, most care in this country took place at a hospital or at a doctor's office. In the last decade, you've had the growth of urgent care centers and imaging centers and telemedicine and all sorts of new ways that are less expensive and as good or better quality. And now things are shifting to the demand side where patients are now. Uh, have to smart shop more intelligently. Well, they have to because they have they can't afford health care anymore. Thank you, right. Obamacare. Now yeah. they've got to be their own financial advocate as well as their own health advocate. Right. And is that going to continue? It will certainly continue, and the solution to it is transparency. If you think about other industries, whether it's travel or autos, as information has made its way onto the internet, and you know what things cost and what's better and worse, you're going to make smart choices. Um, if you can get an MRI for $500 at an imaging center or $2,500 at a hospital, and that affects your pocketbook, and you know the cost, and they're just as good, you're going to go save we've the money. These, we've seen all these healthcare, uh, these hospitals, excuse me, closing. Yes. And then you've also seen hospitals try and make a move into doctors' offices and groups, or they're trying to make their own little, you know, uh, microcosms, if you will, for patient care. Is that a good or a bad thing, though, for patients? I think it's generally a good thing. Hospitals are, generally speaking, very inefficient factories. They try to do a lot of things all the time. And when you have specialization, when you have facilities that just do knee surgeries or facilities that just care, take care of urgent care, that's really where uh, you get the efficiencies in care and save money. Mitch, do you think that the medical innovation is going to bail us out from all of these costs? The rise of immunotherapy, better... Uh, delivery systems for medicines and surgeries and things like that? Or do you think our costs are still going to continue to spiral out of control? Well, we've seen the costs start to flatten out when you have a smart consumer. And that's really what we do is make a smart consumer. The average savings for an MRI, as I alluded to, when we interact and give people information is $779. If you multiply that out just for MRIs, that's a $23 billion savings in what's going on. So to what's systems. the percentage of GDP going into health care, say, 10 years from now? Higher or lower than today? I would have to think it would be flat with today. You have an aging population, you have an overweight population. I think if we can keep a cap on the costs, and the idea would be to have uh, more intelligent consumers. Obviously, there's a lot in the prevention side, but quite a bit on the shopping side. So, uh, oh, go ahead. So, with your company, I think that we've seen younger people, millennials, are more than willing to use online resources. But the aged population is the one that that really is the vast consumer of the healthcare and the medical industry. Are you getting the people that are over 50, over 60, to use your platform? Yes. So, what the answer is yes. That's where most medical care happens. What we did, which was pretty interesting, is we said we're going to allow s patients to s share in the savings of the care that they were having. So if you need to get an infusion drug and there's a $5,000 differential, we'll share $500 of that savings on behalf of the payer with you. Mm -hmm. Giving someone a check dramatically changes behavior. We get more than 50% of folks to switch and about 62% of them are satisfied. Is it a good or a bad thing what we're seeing with the growth of wearable technologies? You know, watches that, that measure your blood pressure and, you know, all of that is kind of, it seems like the, the consumer is becoming so much more active in their own body, if you will. Mm -hmm. Either they're running to the doctor too much because, you know, or maybe not enough. But is that a good thing, do you think, for health care that we're getting so much more involved? I think since the era of the internet, the more that we are the CEO of our own life, the better off we are. Travel agents don't exist anymore as uh, when people are doing as much as they do because of uh, people shopping for their own airline tickets. Uh, we're smarter about buying a car. We're just not nowhere near our health IQ is not as, in, as high as it needs to be uh, as it is in all the other no, areas. My friends that are doctors tell me that, Cheryl, your Google search does not equate to my medical degree. That's what they keep telling me. I yes. don't know. Well, <laughs> there, there's no question that you shouldn't self-diagnose, but you should choose where to get care. You should choose from alternate therapies. You should understand the quality of uh, 
Dr. A versus Dr. B. Right. Um, patient ratings are a huge growth. Get, We've got seven million of them, and that's get involved. Um, get involved. You know, why not hear what other patients have to say about the care they just got from your doctor? Mitch Rothschild. Thank you very much, Mitch. It's going to be an interesting year for healthcare. Happy New Year. Yeah. Thanks. We'll